Are you looking for a great koi making project? Wooden toys are making a resurgence because parents and grandparents have fond memories of these toys when they were kids. They're also getting tired of easily breakable plastic toys and toys that children quickly become bored with. This set will let a child's imagination run free for hours at a time. The castle is built in pieces, so it can be taken apart and put together in any configuration the child can imagine. But no castle is complete without a royal family, a wizard, foot soldiers, and knights on horseback to fight off the two large menacing dragons. In this video, I'll show you how to make this set. All you need is a scroll saw and a drill, and the pieces are easy enough for a beginner on the scroll saw to complete. Let's have some fun. There's nothing difficult about this. There's a lot of pieces, but none of them are difficult. This video is going to be a little different in that I'm not going to spend a lot of time showing you how to cut the items because they're all pretty straightforward. What I'm going to be showing you, I think more than anything else on this video, is how I take something this big and break it down and end up putting the whole thing together. The castle is built from nine identical sections, each one half inch thick. I knew I would make another castle after I sold the first one, so rather than print nine copies of this page, I printed one and attached it to a piece of masonite. Now I can just trace the outline of the piece, the piece as many times as I need. This saves paper and ink, and it works well for simple shapes like this. There's one square piece, six by six, for the platform at the top of the castle gate, and two pieces for the inner and outer gates. All these are used to build the perimeter of the castle, along with 22 pieces that fit into slots in the walls and gate to hold them upright. These parts all make it possible for a child to take apart and put together the castle walls in any configuration they can think of, and believe me, children love putting together and taking apart pieces like this. We have the royal family consisting of a king, a queen, and a princess, as well as the requisite wizard. Plans call for these to be cut from three-quarter inch thick material, and I plan on making these from oak. The shapes for these aren't overly complex, but it makes more sense to print out the patterns for these and attach them to the wood than it does to make masonite patterns. There are two knights that ride horses and ten foot soldiers, all to be cut from three-quarter material. There are two dragons, each of which has two or three parts. Plans call for half-inch material, so I'm going to use half-inch poplar because I plan on painting the dragons green. I have plenty of half-inch poplar on hand, and poplar takes paint nicely. The last patterns are for the two horses. The bodies are three-quarter thick and the legs one-half thick. I'll be making the horses out of sapele because it has a nice, rich brown color, and it will be a good color for the horses. I had a 10-inch wide piece of half-inch poplar that was about 62 inches long. I ran it through the table saw to get a straight and 90 degree edge and used that as the bottom edge for the pieces I cut from it. It was a little wider than I needed for the gate pieces, so I traced them out and I'll trim the tops later. I used my radio arm saw to trim them to width. The castle walls are six inches tall, so I ripped the rest of the poplar to six inches and then used the pattern to lay out as many side pieces as I could on the rest of that board. I took the narrow strip that was left from the long piece after ripping it to six inches for the castle walls and used that to lay out the 22 support pieces. The plan showed the stairway to be cut from one half inch thick material, but that didn't make sense to me since the soldiers are three quarters thick. I traced the pattern onto one and a half inch thick poplar instead. Moving on to the patterns that I cut out and will be attaching to the wood, I grabbed some more one half poplar and a roll of scroll saw tape. There are a number of ways to attach patterns to wood, and this is my favorite. I'll leave a link to my source in the description. Scroll saw tape is a two sided tape that comes in 20 foot rolls. You unroll the sticky side to your wood, then use a utility knife to cut it to width. Once the piece is covered, you lift up a corner and peel off the backing. The tape is transparent enough that you can see the wood grain through it, so you can position your pattern to avoid any defects in the wood. The tape is strong enough to hold patterns firmly while cutting on the scroll saw, but it peels off easily and leaves no residue behind when you're done. The last of the figures are laid out on three-quarter inch red oak. There are two knights that they can ride the horses or stand on the ground. You can tell the difference between the knights and the foot soldiers because the knight's legs are spread apart three quarters of an inch so they can fit on top of the horse. Also on three-quarter oak, we have the wizard, the queen, the princess, the king, 
and then ten foot soldiers, which I'll be able to fit onto this last piece of three quarter oak. It doesn't matter what pieces you cut first or what order you cut them in. I happen to have a number nine Pegasus modified geometry blade in the scroll saw for my last project, so I started with some of the three quarter inch thick oak pieces. I could have used a number seven blade, but this is not a complex pattern, and oak is somewhat on the harder side of the scale. When the blade choice is on the border of two sizes, I will generally go with the larger blade because it will cut faster. The first piece I grabbed was the king, and I couldn't help but think of the repeated line in History of the World Part 1, it's good to be the king. A beginner should be able to cut these figures with no problems. Just follow the line, and if you begin to stray a little, slowly work your way back to the line. Patterns like this, I aim to cut right on the line. As I finish cutting the king, I can illustrate why I like scroll saw tape. You get your fingernail under a corner, and it peels off just like that. The number nine blade was getting dull. So since I had to replace it, I put in a number seven blade this time to cut some of the half inch thick pieces. I grabbed one of the shoe bottoms since that piece was on top of the pile. When I went to cut the slot on top, I realized it was only one quarter inch wide, so I drew new cut lines parallel to the lines on the pattern, making it one half inch wide to accommodate the tree trunk. Every once in a while, you'll find an error in plans, so you have to know how to fix them on the spot. I cut one of the trees next, knowing I would have to modify the slot at the bottom to one half inch wide when I came to that part of the cut. However, when I tried putting the two parts together, I realized the width of the slots was not fine, but the height of the slot on the tree was too high. I would have to remake this tree, but I knew how to make the corrections to the pattern on the second one before I cut it. There are a couple of flags that fly at the top of the castle gate. I marked them where I need to drill a hole in each to insert a one quarter inch dowel rod as a flagpole. It will be a lot easier to drill these holes in the rectangular piece than in the pennant shapes after they've been cut out, so I'm going to set these aside for now and I'll come back to cut the flag shapes after I drill the holes. Next on the stack of half inch parts was the supports for the castle walls and gate. If you'll remember, I used the masonite pattern to trace these on the wood rather than print out 22 paper patterns. The scroll saw is not the best tool for cutting straight lines, but I can always touch up the edges at my disc sander if they look a little wobbly. If I made these cuts at the table saw or radio arm saw, I'd lose one quarter inch of wood to subway turf every time I made a cut, so I opted for the scroll saw. The fit between the slot and wall was a tad on the tight side, so I'll make the fit a little looser on the rest by cutting just outside the lines rather than right on the line. I didn't edit out this little goof here to show you that I still make mistakes even after scroll sawing for years. I was making a 90 degree turn at the bottom of one of the slots in the support piece when the blade slipped out of the lower blade holder. That automatically released the tension lever, as you can see in the slow motion view. This is one of those places where it's great to have a foot switch because I was able to stop the saw quickly. The blade was destroyed, but there was no damage to the workpiece and only a slight scare to me. The sides of the castle are built from nine of these wall sections. I used the table saw to cut these to height and my radio arm saw to trim them to width. I wanted these parts square and straight and the scroll saw is great for curves but not so good at cutting perfectly straight lines. All I had to do on the scroll saw was cut the slots at the bottom of the wall section for the supports and the sections at the top which I believe are called battlements. One of the slots at the bottom was a little tight, so I went back and widened it a little. After I finish cutting the wall sections, I'll go back to ensure everyone is a good fit with the supports. I went on to cut the two identical pieces that will form the castle gate. These are taller than the wall sections and have a large opening with a rounded top butt from the middle. The bottoms have slots and the top has battlements, and just like the wall sections, after cutting these, I'll make a ledge near the top of each that will support the 6x6 platform in between the gate openings. I'll also drill holes in two of the top corners where the flagpoles will be placed. Since I still had a number 7 blade in the saw, I cut the half inch thick legs for the horses next. I'm using sapile for the animals because it has such a beautiful brown color. Gluing the legs to the horses and gluing the supports to the castle gates are the only glue-ups that will be needed for this project. 
These are quick cuts, and the game plan is moving along nicely. I switch to a number 9 blade to cut the two horse bodies. These are not tricky cuts, and even a beginner on a scroll saw should be able to make them with no problems. You'll likely want to print out an extra copy of the pattern for the horses because it shows precisely where to place the legs when you glue them. These positions are essential not only for the horse to balance properly, but also to be placed far enough apart so that a knight can fit between them on the horse's back. There are ten foot soldiers and two knights. The knights can stand or be placed on top of the horses. It's these little details that I think make this playset so interesting and such a great toy. Imagine a child building and rebuilding the castle in different configurations, and having the knight climb up on a horse to go off and slay one of the fierce dragons. Kids have great imaginations and need toys like this to fuel their creativity. There are a lot of pieces to this set, but as I mentioned earlier, there are no difficult parts. Even a beginner on the scroll saw can complete this castle set. I had a lot of fun cutting and painting the parts and then putting them together. Just think of the hours of imaginative play a child can have with this toy. It's the type of toy that will create great memories and can be passed along to another generation. I would love to read your comments on this video and a reply to every one. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. It will help you by being notified anytime I publish a new video and it will help me as YouTube shows this video to others. Thanks for watching and check the screen for a suggestion of what video to watch next.